Okay, hey students, um, in this installment, we're going to be going over number four of the AP Calculus AB release questions for 2012. And we're going to be focusing mainly on differentiation and integration rules. Um, those are the skills that have been tested um, in this problem. All right, so let's take a look at um, 4A. For 4A, we asked to find f prime of x, where f of x is um, the square root of 25 minus x squared. All right, so this is a composite function, is a composition of a quadratic function and a radical function. So we have to use the chain rule to uh, evaluate, the, to find the derivative, okay? This function can be written using the um, nth root property of radicals. This function can be written as 25 minus x squared raised to the 1 half, all right? So remember, the formula for the chain rule um, is f prime of u is equal to, um, let's rewrite it, says, let's write it like this. <coughs> so if you have f of u of x prime, f of u of x prime, is simply going to be f prime of u, you hold the inner function fixed, times u prime, times the derivative of the inner function. In this problem right here, our u is uh, 25 minus x squared, that's our u, okay? So basically, if u is um, 25 minus x squared, this entire function is going to be, we're gonna be looking at, um, u to the one half prime. So u to the one half will be our outer function. We're going to find the derivative of that, and then we'll find the derivative of our inner function. Okay. So what's the derivative of u to the one half? Uh, the derivative of u to the one half, uh, which is basically equal to the square root of u prime. There's a differentiation formula that's really effective or efficient for this. The derivative of the square root of u is equal to 1 over 2 root u times u prime, the derivative of u, okay? And then our new u is with our u of x is going to be 25 minus x squared, and then we can differentiate that to get um, negative 2x as our as the derivative of our innermost function, okay? So let's go ahead and write out here. So this function is the derivative of this function, f prime of x, is going to be f prime of u, the derivative of the outer function holding the inner fix, which is going to be 1 over 2 root 25 minus x squared. If you apply the power rule to this formula and you simplify, you end up with this uh, expression um, times the derivative of the inner function times 25 minus x squared prime. All right, so that's a u prime we have over here. So let's go ahead and differentiate that. We're gonna have one over two root 25 minus x squared times the derivative of that is going to be negative two x. So this two and that two cancels out. So our final answer is going to be negative x over the square root of 25 minus x squared. Okay, so that's that's f prime. Okay, part B, we asked to find, write the equation of a tangent line at x equals negative three. So, um, how do we write the equation of a tangent line? Is basically y minus y one equals m x minus x one. All right, so all we simply need to write the equation of our line is y one, m and x one. We are already provided with x1. We are told that um, x1 is negative 3. x1 equals negative 3. So what is y1 going to be? y1 is basically what you get when you evaluate the function at x1. So basically we're looking for f of negative 3. Okay, f of negative 3 is the square root of 25 minus 3 squared. All right, if you simplify that, you get 25 minus 9, which is 16, root 16 equals 4. All right, so that is f of negative 3. What's the last thing we need? We need m. 
the slope at x equals negative 3, which is basically equal to f prime of negative 3. Right? We already know what the derivative function is. This is the derivative function. So we're just going to evaluate this function at x equals negative 3. So we're going to have negative, negative 3 over the square root of 25 minus negative 3 squared, which is just 9. Okay? The numerator went up with 3, and the denominator, the same answer is that, which is um, 4. Okay, so we have our slope. Now we can write down the equation of our, of our tangent line. Okay, so let's go ahead and write down the equation of our tangent line. We're going to have y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, which is negative 3, so that becomes plus um, plus 3. And then we add 4 to both sides. Our equation is going to be 4 plus 3 over 4, x plus 3. All right, let's take a look at the C part. Part C, we're told, we're given a piecewise defined function, and we said, uh, it says this g of x continues at x equals negative 3, use the definition of continuity to explain the answer. Okay? So what does it mean for a function to be continuous at some a, at some x equals a? So um, f of x is continuous at a if the limit as x approaches a from both sides uh, plus and a minus which is written as just written like this um, of f of x is equal to the value of the function at that a value okay so the three-part process that we're going to do here we're going to first of all part number one is check to see the left if the left and the right hand limits are the same okay so let's find the left and hand, right hand limit. So we're going to have find the limit as x approaches. Okay, so let's let's set this up so we know what we're doing. Uh, we have the piecewise defined function g of x is equal to f of x when uh, for negative five less than or equal to x less than or equal to negative three. And it's equal to uh, x plus 7 or uh, negative 3 less than x less than or equal to 5. All right, so let's go ahead and make a number line. We're looking for the continuity. Uh, we want to look for what's happening at negative 3 to see if the function is continuous or not. So for let's, we, all I care about right now is negative 3. To the left of negative 3, we have f of x. And then to the right of negative 3, we have x plus 7. Okay? All right, so let's start with the left-hand limit. This is the left-hand limit, x approaching negative 3 from the left. And then we'll see if it's the same thing as x approaching 3 from the right. Okay? So we know that x approaches negative 3 from the left of, f of g of x. Of g of x. Uh, is simply we're going to be evaluating this input, evaluating this function at that input is simply um, f of negative 3. Okay? f of negative 3, that means that we just plug in negative 3 into our function and see what we get. Uh, so <clears throat> this is going to, well actually it's the limit. Let's express this as a limit. This is the um, the limit, I have to write that first, limit as x approaches negative 3 of f of x. So the function is approaching negative 3, you're not there yet, okay? So that's going to basically become what we wrote before, f of negative 3. So we're just going to plug in negative 3 into our, our um, original function, which is the square root of 25 minus uh, negative 3 square, and our output is... Uh, 25 minus 9 is 16, which is 4. All right, let's see the right-hand limit. Um, this part one is to determine if the limit exists, okay? So now we're going to approach 3 from the right of g of x. In this case, we're going to be looking at the limit 
as x approaches 3 from the right of x plus 7 because that's what's on the right okay so all we simply do here is input uh, 3 uh, negative 3 into the function so we have negative 3 plus 7 which is equal to positive 4 so the left and right hand limits um, exist that's excellent so that means that the limit we know that on the limit as x approaches negative 3 of the function we are actually the function is actually g of x here so let's write that of g of x is equal to 4 all right now part two let's find out what is f of um f of negative 3 okay not f of negative 3, g of negative 3. I keep changing my f and g. So what is g of negative 3 here? g of negative 3. If you look at your piecewise defined function, you notice that when you're at negative 3, negative 3 included, f of x is basically what's active. So we're going to be looking at f of negative 3. So that's also going to be equal to 4 because we've computed it right here. So this looks excellent. Now our conclusion, since, um, since the limit as x approaches negative 3 from both sides is written like this of g of x is equal to g, the function evaluated at the point that the limit was approaching, since they're both equal, then g of x is continuous at that value, is continuous at x equals negative 3. All right? Okay, let's take a look at the um, the d part. So the d part, um, we asked to evaluate, is basically a definite integral problem. Find the integral from 0 to 5 of x times of x <coughs> root. Let's write that again of x root 25 minus x squared dx. All right, so what integration technique can we use to find the antiderivative before we use FTC part two to, you know, evaluate the final expression? If you look at the inner function of this radical function right here, if I find a derivative, can I get the multiple of this outer function right here? The answer is absolutely. If I differentiate ne uh, x, negative x squared, I'm going to get negative 2x, which is a multiple of x dx. All right? So we're going to use u substitution here. So um, this is a setup that I want to show you. I'm writing this as an integral from 0 to 5 of this function is where my u substitution is going to go. And I should be able to... Um, get this expression replaced completely with the derivative of my u. All right, so uh, we have u is going to be the inner function of our composite function, 25 minus x squared. All right, so that's for the u. So how do we take care of x dx? How do we substitute that? We just differentiate this side using the differentials. The u is equal to negative 2 x dx. But we need x dx by itself, right? So we divide both sides by negative 2. So we have x dx equals du uh, over negative 2, okay? So we're now ready to substitute. This integral becomes the integral from, oh, and also we want to uh, change our limits of integration, okay? Because we, we, we're changing uh, the variables here. So <clears throat> we know that u is equal to 25 minus x squared. So when x is equal to 5, then u is going to be equal to 25 minus 5 squared, which is 0. And when x is equal to 0, then u is going to be equal to uh, 25 minus 0 squared, which is 25. So don't forget to change the limits of integration, OK? So going from 25 to 0, uh, the square root of u um, times the u over negative 2. All right, so how do we integrate root u? 
We just express it as a power and use the power rule for integrals, right? Let's take out the negative one half um, times the integral from 25 to zero of u to the one half du. All right, so the antiderivative is going to be factor of the negative one half is going to be um, u. Yeah, uh, add one to to the power, you get three over two divided by that same answer evaluated from 25 all the way to zero. Simplify this a little bit. So we have negative one half times multiply the numerator by the reciprocal of this two third u to the three over two. Um, this is evaluated from 25 to zero. Okay, well, plug in zero, it's obvious that this entire thing is going to be zero. So all we care about is the 25 piece. So we have negative one half times two third of 25 raised to the three over two power. Okay, so that's simply the square root of 25 to the third. So we have negative one half times, um, if you take the square root of 25, you have five, five to the third you get um, 125, so this is basically going to be <clears throat> 2 third times 125 over 1. Uh, let's see, this, these ones cancel out. Oh, I forgot to put in the 0. So this is supposed to be 0 minus, so there's going to be a negative here, because if we're using FTC part 2, we have to put in the zero first, so we're going to have, let me just put it in here, negative one half times evaluating this entire thing at zero, zero is going to be zero minus, and then we plug in 25, and we get that expression two third times 25 to the three over two. All right, so it's good to plug in the zero so we don't mess up the sign. All right, so we have that, so the twos cancel out, and we have, um, See, minus times minus is positive, and the final answer is going to be 125 over 3. 125 over 3. Okay, so that's the value of the uh, integral.